Made it. <laughs> okay. So, again, live view at the top. So, flexion extension. So, what that's saying is, okay, I had 26 degrees of extension in my left wrist at, at, at here, and then I added a little, flex, I went toward flexion and got to 18, 18 at the top. And then I released it, not just back to 26, but actually just short of it at 25. Okay, so you see if I've released it more, the number's higher. So I went from 26, do it this way, you know, without a clock, without a, Try to get the best view here. Okay, so 26. Flatten my wrist a little bit. Got it to 18. It's very sensitive. 18. And then almost brought it back to 26, but got to 25. And then passed the ball, did more of that. Okay, that's that's the flexion extension part. I would say that's 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 pretty. I tried to make a conventional stroke. Now, let's look at the radial and ulnar, what I personally work on in my conventional stroke a lot. So, what it's showing is, try to get to the number that I'm at here. I'm at uh, nine. If, if you touch the ball, so it detects the impact, so you should take another putt. Oh. Okay, hey, hey, so what that's saying is I had 18 degrees of ulna, and at the top, I had 18 degrees, and at impact, I uncocked it a little bit to 20. I'm going to tell you that of all the things that I've learned about the putting stroke um, that I didn't know since I've gotten the hack motion device and the putting has been available, the putting mode has been available. This is the thing that I notice is the problem in putting strokes is that you really don't, I, you know, I know the putting gurus, right? And the, and the, and the you know, uh, people who work with this stuff all the time in putting, they probably laugh at me saying this, but hey, I'm a lot of places now. I'm just telling you, I, I've never heard people talk too much about radial and ulna in putting. And I, I'm going to promise you, I'm going to turn the um, flexion extension and the rotation off in the graph. I see no real reason not to pretty much flatline this. So uh, just to clarify, maybe the graph here is reference to zero. So it's uh, showing the change in your uh, radial honor, not the absolute value. So that's why it starts right. at zero. Start, they're, they're all, all the putting, all the putting ones are starting at zero. Yeah. Because we, we did it because uh, you have so little wrist motion while you're putting. So if you do it just as uh, absolute value lines, then it would, uh, the graphs look very flat. Yes. And, but, you get the idea, right? So if I was 18, 18, and 20, it picked that up. 18, 18, and 20, that was that was pretty good. See, see the difference right there? All right, so I tried to make a little bit different stroke. So what I did was, on this one, is I was uh, obviously 15 here, and then I went to 11. So, so I was... 15, it's hard to, you put a putter in your hands easier. 15, and then at the top, I actually added a little, so I added, because I've been working on this, so I tried to exaggerate it a hair. I was 15 here, and I added and wound up 11. So I'm adding a lot here and wound up at zero, but wound up at 11. And then I dumped it out, to 20, which is horrific. <laughs> so you start getting these kind of slopey uh, ulna and radial deviation. You're going to be doing this to the putter. This is this is what the putter is going to be doing. And for 25 years minimum, minimum, I have been hitting balls on the toe of the putter, and I don't do that anymore. 
because I've learned what it feels like to, I, I exaggerated again there for you, I hit that ball much closer to the Toulon logo than I did to the middle of the face because what did I do? When I, when I took the putter back, when I took the putter back, I actually radial deviated a little bit when I brought it through. See how that was more of a heel strike. And, I, you know, I, I, I had a lot of people look at my putting stroke. I didn't take, you know, official lessons from a whole bunch of people. And I, I, can, I can anchor putt about 10 different ways. I putt like Webb Simpson now if you put me in a match. <laughs> and it works out just fine for me. But I've always worked on my conventional putting stroke. And this is one of the things that, that'll, that'll show up a bunch. Yeah, I'll hit another one and we'll talk about the other two. I just uh, also wanted to mention we made the, the putter, the putting uh, detector very sensitive because the putter, putting motion is very uh, slight relative to full swing. So it's detecting a lot of, uh, if you just hit things with your wrist, it assumes that you are also putting. So the difference between the full swing mode and the putting mode. So let, let's go just flexion extension. So if I, just to kind of show you two different versions, <laughs> if I did like a Billy Casper stroke, where I was all wrists. I made it anyway. <laughs> that, that was me, me going from 35, right? 35 to negative three to 24 at impact. And then, you know, back to probably about 34 or so here. Wrist putting. And, uh, you know, Billy Casper putted that way, and the guy was a wizard for about 50 years on tour. So, I mean, there are not a whole lot of people trying to do that, but there's going to be people out there doing that. I mean, trying to teach that, but there are people out there who are putters like that, and there's really never been an easy way for them to monitor how much they, they do that. Now, if I tried to, let's say, imitate uh, Tiger Woods from... Uh, from his U.S. Amateur days, or uh, an old buddy of ours from LSU, Greg Lesher, who had, for a while I think was the best putter in golf, uh, very much not changing the flex and extension during the putting stroke. And you see how that line is tremendously more. Now, there, there is a little mini epidemic in putting that I've noticed. I call it grip walk. I would have to stand there and tell somebody, your, your buddy, your putter is, 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 is walking back this way in a putting stroke. And then you have to video them and all this. Now, there it is. So if I were to take my left wrist and go from slightly extended or somewhat extended would be a better term to flexed, that graph would go the opposite way, right? It would go down. You saw the, the Billy Casper stroke. But on this putt, I did this little epidemic thing, which is people trying not to use their wrists. And what they do is they actually add extension in the backstroke, and then they have to kind of shove the putter at the ball. And it is just not a good thing. And you, you, you could make a cottage living, the cottage industry, on just fixing that one thing, getting people who previously would have that green line go up when they do this. There's a green line going up. And teach them to just allow their wrists to go toward flexion a little bit on the backswing. It's a completely different putting stroke. And for most people, better. And then, finally, down here is the... Um, the rotation graph, uh, Rhinos, you want to give them a little what that's showing? So that shows uh, also how much you rotate the wrist relative to the address position in, uh, in a, a, a global coordinate system. So if I were to uh, make my regular conventional stroke, right, what that's showing is I went from zero, I basically opened at seven, and at impact, uh, didn't quite square it up, got back to four. That's, that line didn't go back to zero, okay. If I did a, um, 
the feeling would be, you know, kind of like Charlie Wee, sort of a closed to open feel or, or Dave Pell's putting track, sort of like keeping the face square, then, then the graph would look something like this. The graph goes the other way, right? So, and then you could, you could, if, if, if you wanted to flatline that, I guess, you know, I used to work in the, in the putting track, you'd have my hands way up here like this. And just look at those lines. I mean, I guess you could teach yourself that's to sort of kind of sort of kind of flatline it through the ball. Um, but that's the that's the whole point. The the beauty of this device is it's method agno you know agnostic, right? So look at that that stroke, me trying to make sort of a flat line stroke, and you could say I did some goofy stuff right before impact. But if that's what you wanted to do. There you go. And if you wanted to make, you know, what I would think is a much more modern, you know, Ricky Fowler type stroke, it's going to have, you know, a little bit of everything. Uh, probably not the, probably don't want to do the, you, you probably don't want to go into, into ulna on the backswing, which unfortunately is probably why I putt anchored <laughs> because I did that for 25 years and nobody told me. So having the device um, that, that, that measures this kind of stuff right away i mean just just imagine you you've got your cell phone and uh, i'm off camera here getting run down some balls uh you've got your cell phone out and you're on the, the practice putting green or you've got your cell phone or your ipad out and you're in your hallway i used to putt my mom dad's hallway putt 20 footers all day long didn't help my stroke any because i didn't have anything measuring anything i was just going by i didn't have a video camera because they hadn't been invented yet because i'm old <laughs> and I, I certainly didn't have a, a hack motion device telling me, you know, what I was doing in my stroke. And I probably could have been a million times better putter if I would have had some feedback.